my Professor Jones and my fellows Yan Yi and Yi Ru. So before going deeper into the work, I'd like to invite everyone to stand up and do some exercise together. I know it's a bit sleepy at this time. So now I'm going to play a video. So this is a Tai Chi training guide. So please follow the coach to perform the Tai Chi motion. So let's do it. <laughs> try, you, try your best to follow the motion. So now, please pause. <laughs> now you can look around, try to look around. Some of you may find that everyone's posture is a, a bit or far different from each other. For example, the position, oh, now you may see, you may see that, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the pos uh, this points out the problem that by given only visual instructions, sometimes it's difficult to notice the subtle change of motion. Um, so let's take Tai Chi for instance. The internal rotation and external rotation of the forearm is a kind of subtle change that is relatively difficult to be noticed when watching the video. However, these subtle but important changes are what people are more likely to neglect. For example, forearm rotation is a, uh, are a crucial part in exercise such as Tai Chi. So from the on-site training scenario, we also found that uh, the learner has to focus on the posture of themselves and also the posture of the coach simultaneously. Therefore, it's hard to concentrate on their own motion. Uh, there are many research applies haptic feedback to coach the motion beyond the visual instruction to assist in correcting wrong postures during physical activities, just like the previous work do. For the vibrotactile related studies, different works indicate that vibration pattern designs, rhythms, and sequence of triggering can imply different speed and directions of motion. However, vibrotactile feedback still requires users' cognitive load to translate the tactile information into appropriate movement. Um, electrical muscle stimulation is another approach in motion guidance. Electricity stimulates uh, the muscle uh, and causes the contraction of specific muscles to make people perform a certain movement. However, this overrides users' intention and makes them react involuntarily. Skin stretch excites the skin to deliver rotational skin, uh, stretch cues and cause users to feel the location and directional hint on the skin. Uh, compared to the previous approaches, skin scratch uses a different strategy to guide the movement naturally. Uh, for directing users' wrist movement toward a target pose or a trajectory, uh, five variable actuators, tapper, dragger, squeezer, twister, and vibrator are explored in a, sto in a study in 2012. Uh, this study found that users move most quickly when the cue's direction is transmitted through the location of the tactile stimulus. We wonder that if there's any other approach to convey clear direction. So our idea is to apply an artificial muscle to simulate the real muscle. Uh, so we'll introduce the detail later. Uh, this approach um, shares the same concept as exoskeleton and thumatic artificial muscles. Um, however, uh, the exoskeleton and PAM uh, mainly aims to enhance human body movement and focus on augmenting uh, human abilities. As for our aim is to develop a system that can provide clear and intuitive tactile cues while decreasing the cognitive load. In the on-site training scenario, the Tai Chi coach would touch the practitioner's body parts to guide to a correct motion. So it leads us to think, what if we can create a pulling sensation from a virtual coach by designing a wearable device that can provide tactile feedback? So in this work, we focus on coaching the subtle change of motion. 
such as arm rotation. So how to create a pulling sensation to mimic the touch from the coach? Apart from the previous techniques, we considered uh, the human anatomical system of muscles. The contraction and relaxation of muscles can cause different motion. For example, the prenatal teres and prenatal quadratus work together to achieve internal rotation of forearm, and the supernatal muscle and biceps cause external rotation. Uh, so from this concept, we came up with an idea to apply the concept of how human muscle trigger body movements on an artificial muscle to simulate the real muscle contraction and relaxation to create a pulling sensation to guide the motion. So how to design an artificial muscle? Uh, this is an earlier prototype. Uh, we apply the elastic band connecting to the fishing line as an uh, artificial muscle. Each artificial muscle simulates a real human muscle. Uh, we conduct preliminary studies by this prototype and found that the reaction time is quite long. At the beginning, the user just moved a bit. The user didn't feel the pulling sensation until the artificial muscles becomes tighter. The cue may not be obvious enough to make the user react immediately. So to enhance the pulling force, in the second prototype, we turned a single muscle into four muscles on each side, which become a muscle group. Also, we placed the artificial muscles on a sleeve to make the whole uh, forearm roll. Um, in this user study, we found the pulling force still difficult to perceive. We re-observed the on-site training and found that the coach uh, more likely to touch the practitioner's wrist to guide the motion than touching the elbow. So we made a slight change of the direction of the prototype, the, mo the, the motor and the pulling force direction. Um, so in this prototype, artificial muscles are driven by stepper motors attached to the sleeve near the elbow instead of the wrist. Um, there are eight artificial muscles in both the inner and outer sides of the arm uh, with each of four artificial muscles crossed. Each consists of an elastic band connecting to a fishing line. By pulling different artificial muscles can cause different muscular contractions, which leads to forearm external rotation or um, external rotations. Um, we also use the core stopper and velcro straps to adjust the sleeve to fit the arm of different people. Just to be more clear about how it works, by contracting different muscle groups can cause either internal rotation of the arm or external rotation of the arm. Um, we've done the preliminary st study to explore the effect of uh, this leaf. For evaluation one, we want to know if the user can be guided to a right direction by giving only tactile feedback and how the speed and time of contraction cause different feedback. Um, this evaluation shows that uh, with a faster contraction of muscles, it leads to a faster response. Also, the longer the contraction time, the bigger angle the user reacts to the tactile feedback. Users also commented that there's a clear difference between two stimuli, the contraction and relaxation of muscles. We integrated the effects of contraction time and contraction speed and designed a three-stage tactile cues in the second evaluation. We want to know that if the device can guide the user movement to a pr more precise position. So for more details about the stage, uh, the stage slide, please refer to the paper. Uh, so in this work, we apply the concept of the external artificial muscle, uh, which simulates the contraction and relaxation of human muscle and applies a natural cue to the human body to provide a clear and intuitive feedback. Our approach allows a user to perform movement by their free will while discerning the guidance of the thief. 
We also envision that the concept of the artificial muscle can be applied to other limbs by changing the direction and the position of pulling force. For future design suggestion, we would say that when designing the artificial muscles, one may also refer to the differing um, muscular autonomy for various um, human limbs to alter the parameter. Uh, future applications of this approach include a virtual Tai Chi or yoga class. In the virtual reality, the device can assist in the tactile feedback sim simulating a coach, uh, a, a guidance from the coach to mimic the on-site training scenario. So this is uh, the motion guidance lead. Thanks for listening. Um, um, in our f future study, we plan to um, deploy this kind of method on other other uh, body parts to uh, guide the motion by um, altering the parameters of the sleeve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Karen McLean from UBC. Hi. There's a lot of work in rehab who have studied tried, trying to train muscle movements with guidance, yeah. and the consensus in the field now is that actually guiding is a bad way to teach people. You have to require people to make the movements actively rather than carry them there. They don't learn. You don't develop muscle memory if you're carried there. You have to actually go there on your own power. Have you done tests and thought about how you might use this ingenious <laughs> device to actually follow a protocol that people can learn with? Um, actually, for this question, um, um, we see this kind of device as a, as a um, gentle pulling force mm -hmm. instead of a force feedback because um, we want to provide a gentle touch yeah. in the very beginning of the guidance and um, when uh, the user can um, can use their own power to uh, move to a, mm -hmm. a target a target p position, a target movement, so that when they arrive, uh, when they when they reach the target position, we also give them another feedback to mm -hmm. um, uh, to signal that uh, you've see, reached see, the target yes. position. But for yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So another, another approach you might consider, uh, actually the most successful protocols in rehab have actually been to resist the motion. So the person actually has to push against. So it's the opposite of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Might be something to try and, and, and consider different approaches. Yeah, sounds very interesting. Thank you. Uh, Patrick Baldrich has a Platon Institute. So um, this is great stuff. And so um, Pedro Lopez and I, we did this affordance plus plus thing you mentioned. And uh, we spent a lot of time debating um, the differences between the effect of an external and mechanical actuator and actually actuating the muscles, and we have lots of ideas about that. And um, I was thinking, I was wondering what you think about. So you mentioned earlier that this is involuntary; it's not. Users can override it. I mean, you can certainly cramp up a muscle to a point where people have trouble resisting. But we we did calibrate it to the extent that people could override and resist the motion. What's your sense overall? Like, where do you? Just because we have this wonderful discussion, I thought maybe you have some thoughts on that too. Do you see a difference between like you know actuating externally versus making users um, perform the motion based on EMS? Um, um, could you please? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Let me say it twice as fast. Uh. Uh, <laughs> so, sorry. So, um, you know, we've actuated people using electrical muscle stimulation and yeah. producing you know vaguely similar effects. Um, and and you know, Pedro and I, we have a lot of debates about how that is different from using an exoskeleton or any of these external methods. Um, have you thought about this? Do you think this, you know, if you did a similar effect by stimulating the muscles, do you think there's a qualitative difference between the two? Um, actually, we've done, a, uh, we've done some a preliminary study using EMS. Oh, great. Yeah, but um, we're just curious about that, uh, if we turn down the 
voltage to uh, uh, to reach a more gentle approach mm -hmm. in EMS. Maybe it's still a good approach when guiding the motion mm -hmm. in exercising.